Welcome to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, it's Tuesday, and normally we'd be doing Lightroom Live, but I'm not quite there yet on what to do with that format. So um, here we are doing another live build. Uh, this one tonight is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really, really super excited about this one. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Thank you for watching. Check in, let me know where you were watching from, and what your first Tamiya kit was. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get right into this one. This is, and let me cut over to my, um, my bench cause I've got a new overhead style camera going on here now. So there we are. We're, we're, we're working tonight on the Tamiya racing buggy sand scorcher. Yes. The, uh, the original came out in 1979. And um, this one is a re-release, obviously. I wouldn't be building a new in-box original from 79. That would be staying in the box, of course. Uh, but the big difference today between what uh, you would normally do with a sand scorcher and what I'm doing is I'm using a bunch of parts from Ampro Engineering. Alberto, uh, if you are not familiar with his channel, he is on... YouTube. He does a ton of tutorials, a ton of build videos, and does some pretty amazing stuff to make a lot of the older models a little more modern in some ways. And one of the things he's done uh, for the Sand Scorger uh, is create a whole new chassis. And this is um, the bottom plate of the chassis here. And I've printed this one at home on the Prusa with um, Prusa Mint filament. And it's got a bit of a shine to it, which is kind of nice. Um, the This is replacing this more than not great uh, fiberglass plate. And it's got a lot of flex in it. And, you know, it hasn't changed much since 1979. So um, we're replacing this with this and one of the benefits and there's also not just chassis fixes but a ton of really amazing interior parts too which i'm going to show you as well um, this increases rigidity uh, gives you a much more scale interior uh, space to work with this is the shift boot right here and this is where the seats get placed and then you've got all this room under here. But the really great thing is it moves the battery and a lot of the electronics. So instead of having a servo like way back here, and I'll show you as we get into the actual, in fact, you can see it right here in this picture. Um, the steering servo used to be like way back here somewhere. And it would control the steering via a really long arm and it was really weak steering and not really great. This changes it. So it's basically, you put a servo right here and it um, has a much better um, uh, quality of steering. So that's one of the benefits. Also, it's a just much more rigid piece, moves the battery to the underside. And uh, this printed out really, really nicely, but um, you can see that there's a ton of room for like a 2S LiPo uh, right in there. It also hides a ton of the wiring. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there are holes on either side here. And those holes route the wiring for both the ESC and the motor into a much more hidden area. So it's pretty phenomenal. Um, you can get this print on, and I, I'm sort of beta testing the uh, FDM style print. And it actually turned out pretty good. Um, there are some elements where the uh, um, supports are that aren't great. If you had a tall printer, I would just print it this way probably, or actually I would print it this way. That's probably the better way to print it now that I look at it. Uh, much fewer supports and you get a nice strong print out of it when you print it in this direction because it, it's not going to crack so easily this way because everything's been printed this way. Um, but yeah, that's one of the pieces we'll be working on. The function of tonight is to try to get through most of the actual build of sort of the pieces that will go with all of Alberto's Ampro new parts. Speaking of, um, 
it's really best to do all of this stuff if it's painted first. Um, because once you start assembling it, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can't really get at these things again. So it's been raining here like nonstop. So all I've got so far is primer on all these parts, but I'll walk you through these really quickly and then we'll get into the actual build. So first things first, this cage uh, is an internal cage. This was printed at Shapeways, as you can probably tell. It's way better than anything you could print at home. Uh, on those uh, uh, SLS nylon printers, you get a lot of detail and no supports. So pretty frigging cool. Um, this has been primered. Uh, I'm going to spray it a different color, obviously. There are also really nice door cards too. Um, here's an example of one of those door cards here. Uh, and this piece, this nice uh, smooth printed insert goes into that part there and all goes together. There are a bunch of door handles and other little bits and pieces as well. That's probably in this bag, yes. Um, all kinds of really amazing stuff. Yes, I know I've missed some spots on the uh, primer. There's more work to be done there, Bull Gear. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a really scale accurate build. Um, the dashboard and steering wheel parts are just amazing. Let me get a good look at that there. Really, really, really amazing stuff. And Alberto's gone to the trouble of not just making um, a really amazing looking dashboard. He's also got all of the lights and dials and everything, and they're all set up so you can actually um, light them from behind. So here, I'm going to show you that as best I can. Probably won't focus on that, but really amazing small detail parts here in this clear nylon, which is pretty spectacular. Scale Studio, thanks for the five pounds. Apologies, I can't watch this live. Enjoy the build. I'll see you on catch up. Yes. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Yes. My nails are very clean. <laughs> Um, but really amazing small detailed parts and uh, it really is going to make this sand scorcher look absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the other cool things that he's done, Alberto's got this whole rear portion uh, of the of the sort of the, I guess you could call it sort of like a rear firewall. I don't really know what else you would call it. Um, but the power switch for the ESC gets integrated into this portion here and then it gets covered up with a little Futaba radio, which is in this bag here. Let me see if I can pull that out as well. There it is there. And that becomes the switch, a little old school Futaba radio. So amazing. Uh, all of this stuff is available on Shapeways and uh, including the, um, the, whoops, including the new rear or including the new chassis. So you can get that as well. Uh, Alright, so let's get on to the actual kit construction because that is going to be an important part moving forward. Is that a manicure? No, just my regular nails. I haven't trimmed them lately and I probably should. Alright, so um, a lot of the assembly we can do today because there are so many elements of this kit that get reused. One thing that kind of shocked me about this one, I have to be honest, is the amount of hex hardware. Completely unexpected. It's like mostly hex. I was like, Tamiya? Are you feeling okay? I couldn't believe it. So anyway, uh, very cool. Uh, we're going to get started on the transmission gear case. Uh, Worthy of note, and I'm not doing like a standard unboxing of this kit, but these old vintage kits come in these really cool blister packs. So all the parts are on display when you open the box, which is really, really, really cool. Uh, Matthew Chua, uh, the name of the chassis is the Ampro Engineering Sand Scorcher uh, Chassis Kit, and you can get that on Shapeways rear package tray. Ampro just discovered their hand model. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is a really great way to uh, 
display all the parts. It makes it impossible to keep them all separate when you get into this because there's no easy way to break into this package and keep everything intact. So we're going to do the best we can here. It seems like a shame to get into this this way, but there's no other way to do it. It seems like I'm just ruining things by breaking into this packaging. I guess I could just cut it. I could cut it. Anyway. Jeez. Eh. They really put these on here. There we go. Okay, that'll do for now. Just leave that over there. Got to get some bearings out. These, uh, despite being from 1979, in 1979, there's no way this came with bearings. Uh, it does now, which is pretty great. Uh, and they're all the same size, so that'll be helpful as well. All right, uh, let's get started on the gears and everything here. Uh, are some plastic gears. Uh, we're going to be keeping this brushed because I don't want to wreck it. Um, there's no, like, not a lot of... There's not a lot of guesswork here for parts. I think they probably include a lot of stuff. Um, so they think you're going to need it. One of these is brass. Don't hurt those money makers opening the package. It's like uh, Zoolander, where David Duchovny was the hand model. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Quit mucking about. Just make the kit, idiot. All right, so they do have some pre-assembled um, bits and pieces here. Shall I zoom in? Yes. It's nice having an overhead camera. This makes it so much easier to show you stuff. All right. All right, so I've never built a sand scorcher before. Has anybody built one of these? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Jessica's two-car garage. Matt, you need a cat to help spread all the screws out, like Josh. Yeah, that would be, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? Okay, that appears to be on. And then put a bearing on that side and a bearing on this side. Final gear shaft done. Counter gear. I have to imagine this is that piece, yes. And then we'll need that white gear. Uh huh. You built a Riri a few years ago, still haven't really run it. I feel like that's most people's sand scorchers. I don't think that this is a, a popular kit to run these days. And this gets some bearings as well. Look at all the bearings! Who would have thunk it? All right, so that's the drive shaft. Now we need to get out the transmission plates. Fun fact about this transmission plate. Uh, I think it's been widely sort of discussed already. But there is... Uh, one of these metal plates is featured in a movie character. If you look at Terminator 2, or actually is it Terminator? I think it's the Terminator, the, the first Terminator movie. This transmission plate is actually in the side of the Terminator. Like it's, I think it's positioned this way. In the skull. Look for that. That's some heavy metal. Heavy pot metal right there, folks. The heavier, the better. Holy bearing. Fast Eddie bearings, or are they from the kit? These are from the kit, believe it or not. I couldn't believe it either. 
Note direction. Long short. Okay, there is a long and a short side. Hmm, all right. That's supposed to go all the way in there? Okay. Apparently. <clears throat> Season finale of Oak Island is more important than me? Impossible. Sometimes, to get things to go flush, because this actually does go flush, you have to use uh, a bench press. What is, it, what is it called? A bench vise. There we go. That's better. Alrighty. So, this... There's a... Nope. That is the same on both sides. Oh, look at the tolerances. So intolerable. And then the idler. Which side? Uh, long side goes this way. All right. So far, so good. And then this drive shaft, top gear. Top gear! Look, it's a three gear transmission. Sorry, I was a little bit off camera there. I'm going to move myself over so I don't forget that. Will I coat this with flex seal? It's not a bad idea. I've I've heard some people are doing that. <laughs> I don't know who those people are. But they best not do that. That poor guy. That poor guy. Well, the castings are 41 years old. True enough, Jekler. True enough. All right, we're going to apply some grease. I'm just using uh, white lithium grease that I buy in bulk because who needs to spend money on grease? I'm gonna get it nicely lubed. Seems like a bad idea to have one metal gear and the other two plastic, but what do I know? This kid is, after all, 41 years old. It's almost as old as I am. All right, so that's that. I guess we put this. I guess we put this on now. <laughs> Hello, Patina man. Hello, Quack RC. Thanks for the five bucks. Hey man, hope all is well. I've been watching a lot of uh, Assembly Required. Tim Allen's show. I've never seen that show. Is it on YouTube? Is it on the tube? Let me know. All right, where do those screws come from? The B bag? Looks like they come from the B bag. And, oh, I won't let you guys down. There is a D bag. <laughs> I hope Josh is watching. Eh, eh, eh. So what is, uh, what is everybody doing this fine Tuesday evening, aside from watching me build this? So, uh, thank God that grease isn't as badly squashed as your other lube. What other lube? Two, three, four, five, six. That one's too long. Seven. It's hex hardware, guys. I don't know. I don't really know how to deal with this. It was unexpected. But I love it. Oops, wrong size. Need a two and a half millimeter. And I'm using their thread lock because I love these little containers. Perfect. Now, let's see if I got all this correct. Looks good so far. Yes, it is. It's not just a transmission. It's like a whole rear assembly. Um, but yeah, it is definitely interesting. Oh, 
uh, to go with all this Ampro stuff, and because we're going ultra scale and putting a dashboard and seats and um, a roll cage and door cards and everything else, I'm also going to be printing out um, Knight Customs. James Knight has a really great motor, rear motor option, like a rear engine cover uh, option. And you can uh, print that one at home through his My Mini factory. So I've already got it sliced and ready to go. It's an 18 hour print because I'm doing it at ultra high detail. So uh, that'll be done tomorrow at some point. Because uh, I'll start it tonight after I'm finished with this part. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be uh, nice to have a little more detail. For where are the rest of these go? One goes there. Now I can imagine in 1979 this was probably the pinnacle of RC technology, um, which is saying a, a lot about how much things have changed in the last 40 plus years. Um, but uh, it's, it's pretty spectacularly fun to crack one of these old RiRi's and do some wrenching on something that, you know, was probably out before many of you were born. It really does give you an appreciation for what has changed and what's gotten better over the years. <laughs> but I mean, three gear trans. It's pretty, uh, pretty common. Obviously, there's a pinion and a spur, and those are the outputs. And there is no differential, <laughs> so it is full power to both wheels all the time. Which is definitely interesting. Alright, let's get some uh, external drive shafts on there, which should be in one of these bags somewhere. Where are you? You, oh, they're pitching there in here. They're in here, idiot. Are they? I don't see them. They must be in the other one. Hmm. Okay. Keep looking. There they are. A couple of universal joints up here. Uh, one right there, and the other one on the other side. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Uh, let's actually, I'm not going to tell you. Let's get some guesses from the audience. Um, what color scheme do you think I'm going to go with? Do you think I'm going to do box art? Do you think I have a color in mind? Let me know what you're thinking. Put it in the comments there. I've got a reference printed out. Alex, I can tell you a little bit about why they used, well, not why they used it, but that sort of idea of using those sorts of things, like in the Terminator, using that motor or the part of this transmission case. Uh, it's, um, it's a thing called kit bashing. And kit bashing is a really popular way of taking things that already exist and making them into things that don't exist. As a good example uh, of kit bashing, most of the stuff in Star Wars, like all of the Star Wars, hey, and actually how appropriate, may the fourth be with you. Um, I've never seen a Star War. Um, in those Star Wars movies, all of the ships and all of those things, they would have been kit bashed. A lot of the stuff would have not been scratch built, but they would have taken elements from other kits and other models and built those models up. So that's why um, you'll see elements like, and I mean, they probably never thought anybody would recognize um, the, uh, sorry, I'm kind of searching for parts here as I'm talking. Sorry. Uh, I need some opinion doodads 
Maybe they're not in this bag. Okay. Fun. It's always fun to hunt around for this stuff. Said nobody ever. Um, but yeah, that's why you'll see stuff like that in movies. Kit bashing was really, really popular. Still is. Uh, there's a really great guy on the forum that I follow on Instagram as well, RC Sci-Fi. Uh, he does a ton of kit bashing. There we go. That's what I was looking for. The good old days, I guess, they just packaged all the parts in one bag. Hey, Canada Double One. Uh, this is my second video I've watched on your channel, and I really like them. Well, I'm glad to not disappoint you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, so it's kind of neat to see how things uh, like that get used. It is a pretty interesting kind of concept to kit bash and and build something new out of something that already existed. Lucas used battleship kits. He sure did. Absolutely 100% correct. And real nerds know when to find... Uh, I learned something else about Star Wars today. Uh, that whole um, trench run, everyone thought it was like horizontal along the uh, the um, what's it called? You know the thing around this way around a planet. It's actually it goes this way. Anyway, hello from Alberta. a good sound so equator thanks paul <laughs> it's like i know there's also a place called ecuador should i should remember the words anyway um any good ideas for paint no i'm not having moose jaw painted i'm going to be painting it myself uh but let me show you my reference this is there's not it's not got a lot of friendly words on it so keep that in mind I'm going to be recreating this guy. Look at that. Huh? Tell me that's not the coolest looking sand scorcher you've ever seen. This is a full size uh, Baja buggy. Um, but when I saw this, I was like, yes, I must recreate you. So this is the paint job I'll be going for. 69, dude. <laughs> uh, and there's a, a better look at the rear end of it. I'll be recreating this pipe and everything too. Uh, Night Customs does offer this. Uh, and it's got 69 on the side. Uh, and then it says, In memory of my brother Shippy. And I, I... As soon as I saw it, I was like, Man, I don't know who Shippy is, but... Rest in peace, Shippy. In memory of my brother Shippy. And then at the bottom it says, I miss you, Effer. <laughs> so... We'll be doing that red wheels, uh, sort of this metallic light blue with the racing white. I think that's going to be awesome. So, yeah, that's my reference, <laughs> which I thought was so cool. So I'm really looking forward to that part of it. Um, and I hope that Ampro Engineering likes that one, too. Are you 69 years old? <laughs> no. I feel it sometimes. All right, let's get back to work. Stop, stop mucking about. You've got trucks, cars to build. Cars. All right, we're going to need that piece. I should just pull this off. I'm going to need this as well. We've got super high-tech rear end suspension system here. And by super high-tech, I mean not high-tech at all. Um, pot metal, baby. And where are the torsion bars? Yes, torsion bars. <laughs> Sequest, yeah, those are definitely uh, some interesting props going on there, too. Look at that. The finest technology from 1979. But at the time, again, this would have been pretty high tech. Bottom of the door is the best. Absolutely, Maritime. Uh, that's what sort of sold me on that. P 
piece of packaging tape over the opening in the gearbox slash motor hole. Do I need to do that? Maybe I do. I don't know. Um, all right, let's uh, let's build this thing here. <laughs> you have to lube these these brass standoffs. Okay, this what an amazing thing this is. That goes through there. Huh? And then I guess under the drive shaft? What? What? I'm very confused already. By twisting torsion bars inside, suspension hardness can be decreased. Cool, cool. How? Oh, maybe that just goes in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. That goes like that. And this goes in there. Right. It's all coming together now. Matt, you can't use the torsion bar. Why not? Oh, is that because of the new chassis? I think you're right. I think you're right. Because this meets to this. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yes, thank you, big red bitch. Correct, no torsion bars. Darn it. Ampro said so. Got it. Thanks, buddy. Uh, it's been a little while since I watched his demo videos, so I'm sort of stumbling along as I go, which is de facto for this channel. <laughs> but no torsion bars. Torsion bars removed. All right. Fine. I didn't want to use them anyway, but I bet you I need those brass pieces. Yep, I sure do. How are we going to get those off? We're going to have to bend the torsion bars. Coilover shocks needed. Yes. Thanks, Robert. You also mentioned that, too. But do I need the brass standoffs? I'm going to guess that I do, because there's no other way to attach these uh, rear arms to the actual assembly. So... Darn, you thought it was Wednesday. I, you know what? I almost thought it was Wednesday, too. Please zoom out. Well, there's nothing else to see. I mean, I could zoom out, but you're not going to get anything else. How's that? Better? Ampro didn't show. He's probably busy, if I'm honest. It's a difficult time. I think he's on the West Coast, so... I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, was still working. You know, most people... It's only... Oh, he is in here. Okay, great. So, Alberto, tell me, do I need these standoffs? I'm sure the answer is yes. There we go. Spin that around a bit. How much to build me an F1 car? I'm sorry, I'm not taking any... I'm not taking any jobs on right now. You mean like a Tamiya F1 car? <laughs> Alex 
Alexander. Matt carries the live stream on Wednesdays. Changed my mind. <laughs> if it wasn't for me, Josh would just be going, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I was supposed to lube that. Idiot. Well, you can forget it. I'm not lubing it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I shredding, I couldn't take it on right now, even if I wanted to. I've got so many other projects on the go coming up that uh, there would be no way, unfortunately. Hope you guys are right that I don't need these torsion bars. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, you know. I live stream twice a week just fine without. It. Well, I mean, you do, you do live stream, Josh, but I wouldn't say that you carry it. Forgetting the lube, she won't like that. Josh lurking. He's always lurking. It's like his, uh, that's his MO. Pops out of nowhere. Hey guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm removing these standoffs hang on the old-fashioned way <laughs> elbow grease Brian, <laughs> the colon is good. <laughs> it's good enough for now, anyway. I'm sure my doctor will say otherwise. How many parts are from Ampro? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's at least half a dozen. Uh, bigger bitch sticker sheets are coming along. I should have those done soon adjacent. That's the sound of a torsion bar being removed. Don't pull it off. And then in the next step, put the torsion bars back on. <laughs> Ugh. This one's a lot harder than the other one. But we're almost there. Let me turn this so you get a different look at it. <laughs> did I design the new patina sticker sheets? No, I did not. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> it is ASMR. All right. Other ones removed now. Rocking and rolling again. Huzzah!
Who would have thought building an old transmission like this? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, obviously things are changing because, you know, we're adding different parts and removing other things. So it's not exactly the same. Wide open throttles. If you had a problem with the screen printing, um, by all means, uh, you can contact Shapeways directly and tell them that they they done screwed up and they will send you a brand new one free of charge because it's their mess up and they stand behind all of their products. So I highly recommend that you do that. Okay. Front ones in. Now where do these back pieces come from? BG9 shaft. Gotta get me some shafts here, guys. Where are the shafts? I found them. They're in the torsion bar bag. Really hope you guys are right on that. <laughs> oh, lube. You know what? I'll squirt a little on the edge. And it'll work itself in over time. Good idea, right? Sure. Gross. Maybe this goes the other way. Does it? It does not show which direction it goes. So I will assume it goes this way. Yoink. Yep. Good, good. Brian Sherwood, thanks for the $5. For your next bottle of Go Lightly for the near future. I have to assume that's like a uh, man and lady product. <laughs> I'm not too up on that. But I'm guessing that's what that is. So thank you very much. Steve D, I am definitely chuffed. 100%. Wow. Heavy duty. What suspension movement. Incredible. Lubing it up, sticking it in. Uh, RC Good Times, what do I think of that TTO2 tracked truck? Well, I do like tracks. You guys know that about me. I have that affinity for useless tracked vehicles, and I think that one ticks the boxes. That one seemed to go in quite far. All right, there we go. So do I think it's got a lot of uh, potential? I don't know. Uh, but it definitely looks good. As you know, I do like stuff like that. So, you know, can't say that I, I wouldn't give it a shot. I could definitely see myself using one. Oh man, see now we're getting into the really good technology here because you need body clips on the ends of the axle shafts. <laughs> Hi Wes, what, uh, what thing? It does have the potential to look awesome, I agree. There's a, there's a lot of potential in all Tamiya vehicles. And I think it's just up to the eye of the user to figure out the best way to make it all kind of work. Um, but yeah, I, I could definitely see myself getting one. In fact, I, you know, I posted about it on Instagram as soon as I saw it and I was like, this could be a thing. This could definitely be a thing. Handling, however, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know that it would be a, a tremendously good vehicle 
on anything other than sand and snow. Maybe, maybe dirt. But isn't dirt a form of snow? Yes. Or isn't dirt, isn't dirt a form of sand? Oh, wow. Technology. Let's put that body clip in there so we don't lose that bearing. <laughs> wow. That surely that goes closer to the edge. <laughs> lube, lube it up and stick it in. <laughs> that's as close as it gets. All right, that's fine. That bearing will definitely come out at some point. <laughs> I do like how this whole thing is coming together, though. This is pretty good. It's simple and effective. They said, you know what? When we re-release this for the third time, don't change anything. Leave it all exactly the same. And they did. They changed nothing. Shim? <laughs> uh, I don't think... I don't think that's supposed to be a, sh a shim, but you know, you don't really have much choice. That's, that's all there is to that. Doink. Oh yes. Nylon hex keeps it in there. Ah, okay. Well, I haven't gotten to that point yet. All right. What's next? So that's step two and three. We're done three now. No, we're starting three. Attaching motor. Only the finest Mabuchi motor. I do believe it's a 27 turn. Oh, yes. No, what? Not a Mabuchi. I don't know if you can read that. It's a Johnson. <laughs> Johnson! So we're putting a Johnson motor in this then. All right, fine. The OG cars had the drive flange pressed on the axle. Wow. Incredible. All right. Where is that part? That's the man. Oh, clear plastic parts. Cool. <laughs> putting a John, putting a Johnson in the '69 bug. I'm, it's kind of a shame that we don't get to use this cool piece because this screams 1979. This is the dust cover. Special racing buggy. Ah, man. Darn it all. Kind of wish I was using these parts. Alas, we are not. So away they go. Into the sea. Into to the island of broken toys. What? Putting your Johnson in it? <laughs> I don't think... I think the Johnson gets a dry fit. I don't think it requires any lube. Ah, <laughs> uh, the comedy. See? The things that we'd never notice if we weren't doing this live. I would just blindly put the motor in if I was building the kit and I wouldn't even give it a second thought. But now we get to share all this comedy. Where would we be without comedy? All right. So put the motor things, these glorious uh, bullet connector style, through this, and then on there. That seals all the dirt in. <laughs> when it goes in there, it just stays in. 
perfect. And then this gets fit in there thusly. Nice tight fit. <laughs> oh, you guys. Best stream ever. <laughs> Where are my 12 mils? Three times 12, and then two 18s. Uh, Matt, when you built that RC10, did that chassis look hand cut or was it a re re? Uh, excellent question. I don't know. Mine came, it's an A stamp, it came from the Cadillac location. I think it was the other one. Shoot, now I don't remember. These don't get thread locked, even though they're being th threaded into metal. I guess it's for easy access when the motor explodes. Put some rubber over that, Johnson. That's not a bad idea. Where's the white silicone that went on the motor when you assembled it and on the... What? Where's the white silicone? Oh, that's not on this one. I presume that was for the, uh, you're thinking of the, the multi-shift transmission from the Hilux. Did it touch the sides? Only just, David. Only just. Very snug fit. All right, now. So we're not doing anything with the torsion bars. Flip this around. Everyone can see that just fine, huh? It doesn't look too small, eh? All right. That's fine by me. Flex seal that Johnson. That's not a bad idea either. Uh, okay. Now, we have some options here, gentlemen. We can go with one of two pinion sizes. Tamian knew that the average consumer wanted to have some performance out of their 40-year-old Beetle. So they give you two options. One for speed, the high ratio setting, and one for not so much speed, the low ratio setting, which uh, is a 15 and... What do we got here? Uh, 15 or a 20 tooth. Which one do you think I'm going with? 15. <laughs> There's no need to go fast. <laughs> this Johnson was made for speed. All right, it goes on backwards, uh, obviously. Low, it's too fast as it is. Hey, there's Alberto. Hi, my friend. I really hope I don't need those torsion bars. <laughs> because they're definitely not going to be used again. All right. We'll loosely place the pinion on for now. Low. So the speed is not too much for you. <laughs> you guys know how I am with speed. Not good. Uh, and then obviously the larger of the two spur gears will go with the smaller of the two pinions. So we'll go uh, 70 tooth. And we'll need a washer. 3 mil washer. Oh, the ASMR. And 3 by 6. Alberto, was it common or was this normal for the kit to come with hex hardware? Surely the original did not come with hex. All right, we need a pin. Where are the pins? Not in that package. Not in that package. Not in that package. On that package either. We'll 
one. This is... Dear Tamia, please put all the stuff you need together. For all we know, they could have made this in 1979. And it's just been waiting for somebody to buy it. Uh, is my driver going to have a mullet? Probably. I, I feel like Shippy's brother would definitely have a mullet. Poor Shippy. Man, rest in peace, Shippy. Where is the drive pin? What bag is that shaft in? Ellis swap bugs are the jam nowadays, huh? Okay. That sounds fast and unpredictable. This is my, yeah, this is my new no prep car. Don't you know? Arg! Where is the shaft? Tors I thought it was in the torsion bar bag, but it's not in there. Perhaps I've lost it. No, it's definitely not in that bag. <sighs> not in the shaft bag. No. Not in the bag you would expect it to be in. Ah, there it is. It's in the D bag. Obviously. Right where you would expect it to be. Found it. Pop that, oops, pop that in there, and then spur gear. Almost on. Actually, it'd be smarter to take the pinion off. And then we can press. Oh! I'm glad you guys appreciate my D-bag jokes. It's the only jokes I know how to make. Obvious ones. Yeah, there we go. Kevin Ito, thank you for the $2. Where did you get that kit? Well, uh, anybody can buy one. Uh, I got mine through Tamiya, I think. Or did I get it on... No, I got mine on Tower. Tower Hobbies had them in stock when I was looking for mine. Um, but it's not like... It's not an uncommon kit. This is a re-release, so there are you know, many of these available. Um, or should be, anyway. Oh, yes. Buttery smooth. Set that. There's no way to adjust <laughs> your mesh. It is set it and forget it. <laughs> Sounds good. The bag letter is written. No, it isn't. It's not. Oh, bag D. That's what the B stands for. B. Duh. And look, the pinions are in the BJ bag. <laughs> it says it. I'm not making it up. Yeah, you can't. That's right, Alex. You can't adjust it wrong if there's no adjustments. It's either on or not on. That's all you get. Ah, clear. I love all the clear stuff. It just, just reeks of... The 1970s and 80s. I love it. Absolutely love it. 
All right, a couple of six mil ones. I'm having an absolute blast. I don't know about you guys. And a 10 mil and a 10 mil. Cool. Still not calling for thread lock because they presume probably that you want to get into this every once in a while for routine maintenance. Kevin Edo, thanks for the another thanks for another two dollars. Uh, I want to start a build now that I got my 3D printer. What 3D printer did you buy? Oh man, remember those, Randall? Those were cool as. I feel like dry rot is that clear plastic. Yeah. get there. There we go. All right. Looking sharp. And spinning freely. Ish. Yeah, definitely spinning freely. Nicely done, self. Feel pretty good about that. All right. Let's have a sip of a beverage. Ugh. Stabby Josh, thank you for checking in. So Matt, are you tempted to get a rift kit after Thursday when available, hopefully? Hmm. It's a really interesting question. I might know a guy. I'm just saying. I might know a guy. All right. Let's do the roll bar. Wait, do I use the roll bar? Yes. That definitely gets used. There's the roll bar. Part of it anyway. The rear assembly is plastic. Which is kind of a bummer. Uh, yes, Kevin, thank you for the $2 again. I love my Vanquish um, drivers. I use them religiously. When I'm not using those, and I'm using the DeWalt, which I haven't used at all yet tonight. Um, when I'm using this, I use Traxxas tips because the Traxxas tips are fantastic and they slot right in there, which is kind of nice. Um, but yeah, I love my Vanquish drivers. I use them every day all the time i've only broken one tip off <laughs> uh, all right what parts do we need here pipe joint pipe joints which there should be four yes one two three four Let me guess, you need Windows 10 to run a 3D printer? I honestly don't know. Uh, I used iOS for, or uh, not iOS, iOS whatever they're on, or OS whatever, excuse me. But uh, I haven't, um, I have Windows 10, so I mean, yeah. All right, what are we doing here? We need some screws. 22 millimeter. Those are long ones. Two of those. One of these. When you get stuff for free, why wouldn't you like them? Uh, Mike J, I paid for all of my hardware or all my drivers. This looks like fun. Cool. Look at that, that's neat, eh? Cool. Oop, these are wrong though. What's going on here? 
Eh. There. Neat. Neat. What flavor White Claw? It's uh, Cottage Springs, the Canadian White Claw. We have White Claw here. That's one heck of a long screw. Why do they want that so long? There must be a reason. All right, then we need some lock nuts. Uh, Ryan, no, I have a I have a Windows PC that I use now. Ah, and actually, I'm running in two Windows PCs, three if you count the RC PC. Let's move this out of the way for now. Hi, Max. How are you? I got my first... Oh, jeez. What a moron. I got my first serious Tamiya kit last week, building the Lancia Delta Integrale into a TTO1 Type S. That sounds fun. I've actually got a Lancia XV01 kit uh, sitting upstairs waiting for me to have a free moment to build it. Um, I bought all the James Knight uh, My Mini Factory stuff for that, too. So it'll be definitely adding some cool parts to that and making a neat looking rally car out of it. Um, congratulations though. Uh, Tamiya kits are a blast to put together. I really, really thoroughly enjoy them. Yeah. I've gotten to their nuts. <laughs> you couldn't be more right. This has gone so far downhill. All right. It's actually a pretty interesting assembly to try to put together, one-handed. Why do I feel like I missed a good question? Why did Tamiya get away from the scaled buggies? That is a good question. I have a feeling that um, they sort of lost sort of the drive to be competitive. Because originally, if you go back far enough, people were using like grasshoppers and stuff to actually compete with. Like there was a time when all of those buggies were kind of like the top of the pops when it came to actual technology. Believe it or not. Yes, Todaddy, I believe the, the internet is on computers. God, it's cheese with white claw. No, it's, it's called Cottage Springs. <laughs> oh, man. Cottage cheese. Ugh. That would be gross. That screw goes right through the other bar. Oh, uh, no. What? What do you mean? Put a zip tie on the gray mount to hold it together when you put the roll bar in to hold it. Okay. Well, that would make it easier. Or you could just fumble with it like I did. <laughs> it's holding together fine. The TRF cars? Really, Alex? You think those are the ones that... Like, are people actually competing with those? Cheese curd, White Claw. God, that sounds so gross. So gross. Look at that, guys. I'm a regular genius. I had a turbo hopper as well. Or what? No, that was the Tyco, right? I had the Nico, whatever the Nico was. Yes, under-engineered. I think they were asking about, like, the actual, um, like, slicing software. That you do need a computer for. The printer itself just runs off an SD card. 
has its own controller. This, I believe, is for the antenna that I won't be using, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll use some sort of cool antenna. Could be a thing. White claw equals gross. I don't deny that fact. It's not my favorite beverage. I've had it once. I'll probably never have it again. All right, rear cage complete. We're turning pages. What are we building now? Oh, gross. We're building shocks. That sucks. I don't want to do that. Ugh. Oil filled shocks. Great. At least they're oil filled. These look awesome. I feel like these could definitely get a replacement. Gotta go into the D-bag again. Put all the tiniest hardware in the D-bag. Shock oil bath time. We got C-clips. I mean E-clips. We got them all, baby. One. Uh, how many people, like me, when they built their first Tamiya kit, just pulled everything out of the bags and put them <laughs> into one big giant container. I was like, I'm so smart. I'm saving myself all kinds of time. <laughs> Not so. Not so at all. All right, let's build some shocks. Worst day ever. Oh, let's build the rear ones first, because those are the ones we'll be using. Uh, Trevor, yes, we are, Josh and I, doing a budget build this year. But I haven't told any we haven't told anybody what it is yet that we're doing. The suspense is killing people. It's going to be pretty great. The front gets more damping than the rear. Well, that makes sense. sure I'm doing this right which I am does it involve a dancing rider no it does not I would never agree to that <laughs> there's not a lot of hop-ups I don't think for the dancing rider are you guys doing it anytime soon uh, yes, I would say within the next month and a bit, we're probably going to get going on that. We have to finish RCPC first, which, god dang, requires one more episode. Oh, the front dampers are the taller ones. Okay. Fine. Fine then. Submarines, yes. Where can one get that hat? I got it. There's a tattoo shop around the corner from my house. 
And they sell this hat, among other things. Um, they make they make tattoos, I guess, as well. Not right now, but they're making merch to kind of um, pay their rent. So they make these hats. They've got a couple other things. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's called Indestructible. And I think they're, they're online, so you can order all that stuff online. Just Google, you need coilover shocks for rear. Because I do, or because that's what Ampro says I need? Tell me. Teach me. Oh yes, hit the like button if you're if you're liking this. Hit the button if you don't like this. Pistons. This is so tedious. So spoiled by kits that have the shocks already built. Because this isn't fun. Ampro said so. Okay. Well, I guess we won't be doing that part then. I'm going to build them anyway. Because I'm already two-thirds of the way through this part. There will be more episodes anyway. Not like this is the only one. Well, you got rid of the torsion bars, so you need some springs in the rear. Oh. That does make sense. I appreciate you guys helping along the way. This is the other reason I build it live. Because <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. The chat's more entertaining than the shock building. I don't disagree. Anything is more entertaining than shock building. All right. Boring. Okay, I'll build the front ones. How about that? Front. Spacer doodad. Where are the... O-rings. E-bag. It's not labeled as E. Two rippers were listed on Facebook today? Interesting. Brian, what was the price? What were they asking? What were they asking? $19,000? They're not, it's not Doja coin. That's, that's insanity. I would not pay that. For the pair even, I still wouldn't pay that. I'd pay 18000 <laughs> I don't know, you can get a pretty nice car for that. Or a pretty crappy nice car. I don't know. I mean, I, I get the value because they don't make them. So, you know, there is that. And if you really wanted one, you could, that's the only way to get one. What were the serial numbers? Rip a coin. <laughs> That's a good one, Ben. Hi, Ben. How are you? Don't worry. I still have your truck for you. What an odd way to build a shock. Huh. Well, they're the boss. 54 and 105, eh? 
I mean, but that's the thing, Mike. It would totally pay off your bills. I don't, I don't disagree with that. But you had to buy them in the first place. And, you know, like, I mean, there's not, that's not a significant markup. All right, how full do you think we should fill these? I'm nervous. To the inside step. Ah, okay, perfect. Cool. Yeah. Now what? Oh, if it was only... If, it, if one was only 106. All right. Tissue paper. Psh. Who needs that? Not me. Eh, maybe I need some... I need some tissue paper. <laughs> Gross. I think these are probably the worst shocks you could ever build. <laughs> to the moon! That's a good one, Chris. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't think that... Well, they want you to use like some sort of like paper towel, tissue paper. Oof. Nope. We are definitely going to be getting replacement shocks because these are junk. All the oil is leaking out of them. <laughs> as soon as you press down on it, it just squirts oil out. Oof. There's no seals, right? There's nothing in there. I don't like it. <laughs> Coilovers it is. Uh, yes, these are brass ends. Nice and heavy. <laughs> yeah, we'll be switching out these shocks for sure. Because these are no good. Hello, Jamin RC. Building is one. Yeah, so uh, let's just cancel the shock building instruction. <laughs> uh, maybe put those away for now. Move on to another step. Proline scalers. Those are going to be a little large. I'll probably have to go to like RC four wheel drive 60 millimeter. That's why they want you to have the tissue. It's not just that, Wes. I think they because because you're crying your way down this the instruction. Just do it like it's 1979. But I'm not. That's the thing. I'm upgrading so many parts thanks to Ampro Engineering that putting those shocks on this might not be the best idea. All right. Let's pretend that I didn't that I did finish that part. Some of those parts of the shocks might come in handy later. I'll keep them. I will keep them for sure. Well, we can put this piece on. For now, I believe. ECX Barrage, that might be a good choice as well. Kind of nice we're not putting the shocks on. It's going to speed everything right up. This build will be done in no time. I mean, there is the, you know, all the painting of all those other parts that still has to be done. It's not like this is going to get finished tonight. I mean, the basic construction, hopefully.
Josh could get it finished tonight. I, well, yeah, because he would paint it with a chip brush. I'm actually, you know, I'm going for an actual, like, look. What company has non-leaky shocks? Well, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I've had pretty decent luck with the new SCX-10 three shocks. Believe me or not, it's the truth. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I like I like this hat. Can't please them all. So true. Has Josh finished anything lately? Ouch. Ouch. Probably not, no. And we need a couple more 10 mils. Should have just taken them out of the box, out of the bag. There we go. Still no thread lock for these ones. It's okay. Josh would have RC Patina guy painted. That's probably more likely. Oops. This is a pretty cool kit so far, I have to say. For its age, like it shows its age big time. But it's still really cool. And I'm glad to finally have one. I've always kind of been like, oh man. I really want one of those, but never got around to getting one until now. That's looking pretty good. So we're skipping the shocks. Oh, I should put the caution sticker on right now. And then we can skip that whole thing. Uh, Cause we're not doing this. This is going to attach to this thusly. Yes. That's already looking pretty cool. It's longer than I thought. Ah, oh, that's what she said. There. That'll all get screwed together. Right into the chassis. Very cool. Okay, let's put that over to the side for now, because we do not need that. Should I put Capra axles on my trail honcho? I wouldn't. I think the Capra axle's way too long, or way too wide, for a trail truck. Waiting, waiting for them to repop the Jeep Wrangler CCO2. That would be nice. I mean, they offer the body still. You can still get the body pretty easily. Uh, moving on to front suspension. Get some uprights here. They go this way. And we need some front axles. Some front axle bits. These guys. And we need these guys. What else do we have here? There's not much left in here. Where's the upper arms? Beep, boop, beep. Hello, SFL RC24. How are you? Might as well take this out now. Is that a, a metal parts or just silver painted plastic? These are all metal. This chassis, uh, are you talking about the new chassis from Ampro? This is plastic. This is uh, 3D printed. Uh, he's offering it through Shapeways. You can also, uh, well, at least I'm the guinea pig for printing it at home. And as you can see, it turned out pretty darn good. 
I'm just getting the rest of my pieces out here. So she's a heavy girl. Oh yes. Heavy and probably quite uh, robust. I'm guessing. And my P made all those pot metal parts out of nylon. Interesting. That would be neat to see that. around making sure I've got all the bits here. Why do I feel like these upper arms? MB15. I haven't seen those anywhere. Ah. No. Oh. It's just a weird diagram of this thing. Duh. Okay, fine. Appears as if we need this. Where do these springs go? I don't know. of these but I've only found one which seems odd to me unless Ampro says I don't need them Ampro's were not FDM that's correct his were Shapeways Little D, I appear to be missing a spring. They only gave me one of these. Maybe that is only for one. Nope, it, you need it on both. All right, well, let's build one for now. See how far we get. Right, upper left upper neat yeah that's correct this is not the SLS one uh, but that's because I was guinea pigging to see if uh, this was going to work that was the point of this sort of experiment for me anyway Alberto was kind enough to let me give it a shot. So far, so good. I imagine it'll be as strong as the SLS one. Maybe a little less strong, but still. left lower there we go uh, this was PETG I did one in PETG this one's PLA I believe oh toss man there will not be any air not to worry. Not my style. I think this will be sort of like, because it's going to be so scale, um, I'm probably going to spend... What is the point of that? Don't ask questions. 
just assemble. Take care, Jamin. Thanks for checking in, my man. What an interesting assembly this is. Also still running two times bumpers. Yes, probably not a bad idea. You just never know with these old... These old ones, right? What is this ancient technology? And that obviously goes between there. Wow, we would a TF2 body fit in a trail honcho? Uh, the cab would. Uh, it's not the same wheelbase as a honcho, so you'd be out of luck there. Okay, so that's one arm. I'm really going to need that other spring. Hopefully, I can track that down because that's going to be a real pain if that has gone bye bye. Not looking good. Hey, a random stuff garage. That's great news. Thanks for letting me know. Mine just came off. Actually, one of the ones I did on the sticker sheet that just came off my Jeep, and that's been on there for a long time. So. It wasn't, it peeled a little bit and I just said, okay, see you later. I might need to get one of those springs again because I think they shorted me one. I don't remember seeing two in that bag. I got this other weird thing in here, so it kind of sucks. Kind of sucks big time. It happens, though. I'm not going to lose my mind over it. Despite maybe wanting to. That's okay. We'll, we'll keep going. A little dab of uh, lithium grease on these parts. Then right, upper, right, lower. And we need more these guys. Nine. It's been an hour and a half. I think we're doing pretty good so far. Billy Ray uh, just had a lipo catch fire. That doesn't sound good at all. I hope you're all right, man. Yikes. Not good whatsoever. Says one in one bag and one in bag two, huh? BG one, BG two, but they're both in BG. And there was only one in there. So I don't know what to tell ya. What's it like? Oh! Ah! Ha ha! It fell on the floor! Thanks, guys. All right, now we're back in business.
cool beans. Thank you for suggesting I look on the floor. Oh, you charge batteries in the garage in a light bulb bag. That's good. I have a big giant ammo can that I uh, do my charging in. Uh, not with a sealed lid. Sorry, Mike, I didn't see your comment. But I appreciate you looking after me. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, Mike J called it. He must have heard the bag fall earlier and just like knew that that's where it was. <laughs> where would I be without you guys? Struggling as usual. Good old pot metal. Your bag dropped. Uh. All right. Cool. That's that section done. Attaching uprights. Ball plate. Plastic. Tension of the front springs can be adjusted by moving it to either between or behind for more tension. I don't feel like this will be getting a lot of hard driving. So we're just going to leave it on medium. Okay. Left, right, ball studs coming up. Two different kinds of ball studs. The A bag. C. A. How many Tamiya kits have I built? Rob? Great question. It's probably into the dozens. But this is the first time building a sand scorcher. And it shows. <laughs> this is not, this is quite foreign to me because of the age of the kit. Um, I've, and I've never seen these steps before. So, you know, I'm kind of going as slowly as I can, which is a good speed. Thread lock. Thread lock. Let's build the new eight tenths to Mia next. Yeah, that thing looks like a hoot. Somebody I know pre ordered it already. Are these the original instructions? I believe they've been altered. Is this kit for sale? Like, am I selling this one? Not yet. <laughs> Let's see how far I get uh, with uh, the recreation uh, that, uh, that I'm doing. Where'd that go? I have misplaced my reference. Here it is. That's what we're going to make this look like eventually, which I'm pretty excited about. Fun looking Baja bug in memory of my brother Shippy. 
All right. Where's my T wrench? I need the small T wrench. Good thing they give you one in every box. Yes. Slug bug. Why won't you go? What? Oh, they've changed this. It's not a T wrench anymore. Right. Oh, I see what they want you to do. I know. I'm really excited about my reference. I feel really like I've done something kind of cool there, finding that. Make four of these, eh? It's never going to go in there. Maybe if I do this. Yeah, there we go. Managing to keep my workspace fairly clean, which is irregular for me. There we go. Now. This goes in there. I presume that screws in. Nope. It doesn't. Okay. And that goes in top. Thusly. And then you somehow have to get Make sure I'm doing this all right. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. I see. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Challenging, but not impossible to do. Oh, and thread lock, of course. Why don't they tell you that first? Don't chip a nail. <laughs> Brian. Holy heck. The kit is winning, but the spectators are loving it. It's not, uh, this is all very fiddly. <laughs> but I think we, I, like I expected that going in. Great. Holy hex. Slide the spring out of the way. Well, now you tell me. It's a little bit easier. Do those get those must get screwed into place afterwards. Yes. Threadlock is overrated. It depends. Hmm, that doesn't look right at all. 
Nope, that's correct. That's how it goes. What an interesting assembly. Yeah, but these these will get sloppy over time, no doubt. It's odd that you don't like it must be in another step that you screw that into place. Anyway, not so hard. I should have got no the Johnson's firmly in place. <laughs> Johnson Now this has to go that way. Okay, good. Good, good. Build a kit live, they said. It'd be easy, they said. Actually, I don't think anybody's ever said that. Ever. That said, I mean, this isn't, this hasn't been that complicated. It's been pretty, pretty easy going, really. Because there's not many parts. Except those horrible shocks. Those deserve an honorable mention for worst shock ever. Yeah, if only these parts were bigger, right? That's the problem. Okay, they're in. They are in. I think we're moving on now to the next page because I'm not putting the dampers on. Oh, cool. One. Two, three. Got to get more grease. They do get little tiny screws, which I'm going to do first. And this is not hex. First time I have to get out a Phillips head screwdriver, which is pretty amazing. That must be new. And Ampro, I don't think, I don't know if Alberto's still watching, but that must be the part that's part of the re because there's no way they would have, they would have included hex hardware in 79. No way. The antenna on that transmitter is epic. JIS. Yeah, I don't have an actual JIS, but this is close enough. Last step. About those torsion bars. <laughs> Ah, uh, Mike. Good one, dude. <laughs> oh, are you talking about this antenna here? Yeah. The good old days. Who's on 27? What crystal? Weird. I did not see a single dropout. Did you guys see a dropout? Anyway, okay. Grease. Now I understand why there would be so many failures on these cars. All right. Big tube. Other big tube. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Little tube. Big tube. Oh, yes. Six mils. Six mil on the end, eh? 
Okay. So why hasn't, okay, so if Tamiya decided to upgrade the hardware to hex on this Riri, why aren't they just using hex on every single kit? Is it, it's probably because of what I asked when I asked Tony about the Tamiya connectors. If like, they probably have a bajillion, they ordered a billion <laughs> Tamiya connectors and they ordered 100 billion um, sets of all the hardware. So they're stuck. They have to use JIS hardware and everything else. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if that was actually the case? They'd be like, yep, you're absolutely right. That's the reason why. Yes, Ryan. That is <laughs> that's where that came from. Oh, yeah, guys. Front steering assembly. And very good suspension. <laughs> is this really how a front end on a VW looked, Mike? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Tammy decision making is strictly linked to coin flips. That's pretty funny. I like that. Now, um, one thing I am going to not do again is... What the heck is with that servo saver? We won't be doing that either because none of that gets used. What ends up happening here is this assembly attaches to this like so, give or take. Yeah, there we go. And your servo goes right here. And I think it has to be a fairly slim one basing myself on where those holes go. And then um, your servo saver attaches directly to the servo. And then your steering is actuated via those there. So no need to do this step. We can put this on, though. That'll get put on. Uh, with this one of these big screws, one of these big ass screws. So we'll put that on for now. Watch me crack the FDM right now. One hundred percent infill. Correct. There is no no gaps anywhere. It's one hundred percent infill. No thread lock. I think we'll leave that for now. <laughs> I don't think that part needs it. It's fine. It's fine. All right. We're also not going to be putting the bumper on. But let's put this steering, this front end, on here. So cool. What are they calling for there? 10 mil. These do get some thread lock, so we'll put the thread lock on there. Now I'll have to check the instructions. There are extra holes here. So my presumption is that that would be for the bumper. Yes, it is. But I think we're gonna, maybe we'll put it on. I don't know. I don't love the front bumper. Yes, uh, the brass ball studs do get swapped. You are right, Tim. Thank you very much for reminding me. Uh, I can do that later. Or it needs to be a different one maybe. Uh, yes, Trevor, this is a 3D printed chassis. Courtesy of Ampro Engineering. Uh, 10 mil. One, two, three, four. Four. 
Is that a mini stripper pole? <laughs> that is for the body. That's where the body clips on to this. It is considerably different than a stock scorcher, yes. Very much so. Screw doesn't need a washer? No? Doesn't get a washer. Not per these instructions, anyway. How long to print all the parts? Uh, it's not actually that long of a print, Tossed Man. Um, well, Todd is your real name. I will call you Todd. I think it took, um, eight hours to print out this, uh, chassis. Which is pretty good, I'd say. Needs a little bit of adjusting on the fit here, so I'm gonna back this one out for a second. Just make sure everything is right in place. That's looking good. Wash her. There we go. Ampro, for all your small bug problems. <laughs> good stuff. So this is all sort of like, I'm just dry fitting it for now. Um, because there's still, have I printed all the rest? Uh, yes, Todd, a actually everything else came for me from Shapeways because it's all like really heavy duty, like small fiddly stuff, uh, really high detail. And I wanted to make sure that I'm showing off that stuff as best I can. This, this chassis piece, I felt like uh, Alberto wanted me to test printing it at home on an FDM printer, so that was the point of this sort of an experiment, if you will, which I believe worked pretty well. It looks great. Yeah, all right. Good stuff. That looks like a pretty good fit. And uh, I'm glad that I printed it in silver. You know, it actually looks kind of great. Just like that as, as like metal. And um, let me see if we can kind of, for now, get that all into place. Let's zoom out a tiny bit. Oops, wrong way. You can see my microphone. There we go. There's the whole chassis assembly, basically, in one piece now. That looks really, really good. Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, there's still some bits and pieces here that still need to be done need to figure out what some of these parts are for. Ah, uh, I see. That's for that piece. Okay, well, we're not using any of that. So, you know what, guys? We're pretty much done for the basic chassis assembly. Amazing. I just want to see how we can... Okay, so let's put some of these bits and pieces on here, actually, so we can get this all done. Um, uh, am I going to take it off any sweet jumps? No, absolutely not. There will be no sweet jumps in this car's future. BA6. Rosette Washer. So pretty.
We're not done yet. Yeah, you know what, Chris, you're absolutely right. We have just begun. There is so much more to do on this before we could even get close to calling it done. I'm, I'm just saying, for the purposes of kind of being close to done, I bet you these don't fit there. No, they're not really. That's not really going to go. Uh, RC Trail King, no. No Lightroom this week. Um, I'm still kind of trying to figure out the best plan for making it a better series. Because I really feel like we have a good opportunity to do something kind of fun with that. And I'm not quite there yet. I'm trying to make it a little more interactive. Curbs, yes. Jumps, no. But once I get there, Lightroom Live will be back. It might not be every week. It's a lot of effort to do that show every week. I'm not going to lie. This is just a test dry fit for now. Throw something else. Throw in something else with Lightroom Live. Like editing tips, maybe? Is that something that people would be interested in? I know that... Um, uh, Odinus, this, this is literally just, I'm just dry fitting this for now, but yeah, it should be, uh, cause it bolts right through. As you can see there, there's a tab, uh, and I'm going to do my best not to snap that tab cause that would be terrible. See you later, Ben. Thanks for checking in pal. Wheels and tires, yeah. That's obviously another step that still needs to be done. Uh, MB2, well nut. Well nut. Is that this one? It looks like it is it. So that would go... I get it, okay. What about photography tutorials? Ways to need less editing. Ways to enhance scale details. Yeah, that could definitely be a thing for sure. All right. So uh, that's essentially how the new chassis is going to go. Um, there's still a lot to be done, of course. But that's basically in a nutshell, where we're going to start. And this is supposed to, and so far does, offer a lot more rigidity than the standard um, chassis that this car comes with. Plus, it offers you a much more scale opportunity to do a full interior. Um, the seats that Alberto recommends are the uh, basically the Wraith seats. So um, those go in right here. And then you start adding on some other cool pieces like this cage, which looks so badass. There is a front firewall with actual pedals and stuff. And that will go in here. So then you have like the beginnings of a full interior. Then there's this whole other back piece here. There's a lot more things that I have to do, like all of this snaps apart. You can see like the detail is just crazy good on these uh, F or on these uh, SLS nylon printed parts. But these pieces come off on the sides and then it all sort of like comes into there. This roll cage stays and uh, it just becomes a really scale accurate beetle. It's I am so excited about this. And because of this cage and how it integrates into the actual chassis, because it all it screws in, it's actually structural. It becomes a much more rigid chassis. It is awesome. No, Max, the acrylic box goes. This is not the original chassis. Um, it becomes a, a whole new beetle, basically. You get to put your battery in on the bottom and run all your wires and electronics through the bottom so everything is hidden. 
it's a really great piece of kit and uh, it really changes the whole dynamic and the scale accuracy of the Beetle. And it's going to be a much more exciting vehicle to have not just on the shelf, but also out on the, on the uh, light trails. But it is very, very slick. And um, once you start adding in all of these really great details, like this dashboard is just amazing. All the dials are uh, able to be lit up. And he's got, Alberto did a really nice uh, SLS printed dash. Let me see if I can find all the bits and pieces here. This piece is crazy. Uh, Cause I don't know if you can see that, but there's a keychain that got printed just like that. Isn't that absolutely nuts? It's a little peace symbol, which is great. So all these parts get painted. I know this is so me. You're absolutely right. So this all goes like, you know, this will all integrate into this and then to like really amp, amp up all the details. There's like steering wheel horn thing, all the handles. There's a little tiny Futaba controller like old school box controller that becomes the switch, like your on off switch. Isn't that awesome? It's so crazy. Uh, yeah, a cinematic running video, 100%. Uh, then we've got all the dials here and they're sort of maybe a little bit hard to see there, but you probably see them all. And, um, those will all be lit up. They all have spots for three mil LEDs on the back so cool there's also because you know why stop there there's a handbrake which looks pretty great shifter knob which goes into the shift boot which was 3d whoa 3d printed I'm sure that uh meant to go in there like that <laughs> yes so cool. So yeah, that's where I'm at. There's obviously a few more steps. We could do wheels and tires, I guess. But uh, this dys dyslexic Schweb is the Tamiya Sand Scorcher with Ampro Engineering chassis replacement. And we're going to get a full cage on there. The works. It's going to have it all. Did you say boot? I said a boot. And, uh, yeah. Shredding 44. This is getting the stock Johnson 540 can motor. Uh, yes, we cannot expect to see this getting 8S on a BMX park. Uh, yeah. So there you go. I am quite chuffed. I'm really, really, really excited by this and uh, cannot thank Alberto enough for giving me an opportunity to try printing this chassis at home. Uh, I think it just looks so rad and really kind of brings new life to a very old kit uh, and definitely is going to be a total blast. So yeah, there we go. Uh, that's uh, Ugly52. The point of these are to actually paint the whole thing black and then use 1500 grit sandpaper because all the, the numbers and all the little like bits are raised. So you'll actually just sand off the numbers and that's what shines through. So that's going to be really cool to see that. All right. I think that's going to do it, guys. Um, thank you very much for checking in tonight and watching and uh, participating in all of this. If you're interested in any of these Ampro parts, there is a link in the description to his Shapeway store where you can pick up all of these parts. It's definitely not going to be inexpensive, but it is very unique and pretty amazing and uh, something I would highly recommend if you want to do a very ultra super scale uh, Tamiya Sand Scorcher. Only way to do it as far as I can, uh, as far as I can tell, as far as I can say. I think it's going to be really rad. Thanks, everybody. And thank you to the following. Scale Studio, Quack RC, Brian Sherwood, Kevin Ito, times three. 
thanks very much guys uh, i think that's everybody uh so we'll catch you tomorrow night for live stream takeover where i'll be sitting in this chair for another two hours uh that's gonna do it though um yeah if you have any questions by all means put them in the description uh, put them in the comments down below after the live stream ends and i will get back to them and uh hope you enjoyed thanks very much guys Oh, yeah, there will definitely be a follow-up video once all of the uh, bits are in and painted. And that uh, scheme, I think, that's going to look pretty great. I miss you, Shippy. <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Love you, bye.